What's up guys, it is Ozzy from Oz Talks Hardware, and I first want to apologize if I look a little bit scruffy. I had AP exams last week, and I have finals this week, and so I have been a little bit stressed out and busy when it comes to school. And so that's why this beard isn't shaved. Anyway, enough about me and my well-being. The subject of the video today is processors. So basically in this tier list, I rank processors from about 2008 onward. Of course, there are a couple of disclaimers for this video, the very first one being that this is performance at stock and I am just trying to rank the raw performance of the CPU. I do not take into account overclocking or energy efficiency or pretty much anything other than raw CPU power. The second disclaimer is that DirectX 12 is not taken into account when ranking these CPUs. I would love to add that to the video, but unfortunately we just do not have enough benchmarks for me to make confident decisions ranking these CPUs based on the DirectX 12 performance. And lastly, this is a pretty general list. I do not go into real specifics, and mostly because this is the first time I'm doing this list, so I wanna see how you guys react to it, and I wanna see if you guys actually enjoy this, and if you do, I will get into more specifics later on. And I think I've blabbered on long enough, so let's start with the actual list. So I'm putting these CPUs in seven different ranks, S, A, B, C, D, E, F. F is the lowest and S is the highest. And I will try to kind of explain the meaning behind these ranks as time goes on. So rank F is the very lowest and this is labeled the low end of the spectrum. These CPUs should not be used for gaming and they're really just office processors. From Intel, here we have the Celeron E series, the Celeron 400 series and the Pentium E series. From AMD, we have the second generation Athlon 64 CPU processors along with the Athlon FX 64 processors. We also have the Sempron, the original Athlon X2s and the second generation Athlon X2s. So now we have rank E, which is the higher low end. Generally speaking, you can play older games on this hardware, but because of the older architecture, it will struggle with newer titles. From Intel, we have the Core 2 Duo series, we have the Celeron G500 series, and we have the Pentium G600 series, the Pentium G800 series, and the Pentium G2000 series. From AMD, we have the original Phenoms, all of them, and we also have the second generation Athlon quad cores, and the AMD APU A8s and lower. So now we have rank D, which is the lower mid end of the spectrum. Generally speaking, these CPUs can play newer titles, but they will be bottlenecked and the bottleneck will be noticeable and it should be monitored. These are placeholders for upgrades. From Intel, we have the Core 2 Quad Series, including the Extremes. We also have the first generation i3s and i5s and the second and third generation i3s. We also have the Celeron G1800 series, the Pentium G3000 and 4000 series as well. From AMD, we have the second generation Phantom Quad Cores. We also have the entire FX4000 line. We have the first generation of Bulldozer 6 cores. We also have the Athlon X4800 series, the 700 series, and the AMD A10 APUs. So now we have rank C, which is the middle end of the spectrum. Here, CPUs will be bottlenecked, but it won't be as noticeable as rank D. And generally speaking, these CPUs still have a year or two before you should actually Actually upgrade. From Intel, we have the Haswell and Skylake i3s, and we also have the Sandy and Ivy Ridge i5s, and the original i7-800 cores. From AMD, we have the second generation Phenom 6 core CPUs, and we have the entire FX8 core lineup, and the Vachera 6 core lineup. So now we have rank B, which is the lower high end of the spectrum, and these CPUs can play most AAA titles maxed out with high-end cards, but unfortunately they lack the raw power of the high-end and enthusiast line of processors. There will be some sort of bottleneck, but it won't be very noticeable until you get to the higher end of video cards. From Intel, we have the i7-900 series, including their extremes. We also have their Xeon counterparts, excluding the two core variants. We have the Haswell i5s, the Sandy Bridge i7s, and also the Sandy Bridge Xeons as well. From AMD, all we have is the FX9000 series. So now we have rank A, which is the high-end side of CPUs, and these can pretty much handle anything you throw at it, except for maybe high-end production and mass production and mass content creation. And on top of that, they have lots of longevity. We have no AMD CPUs here, but from Intel, we have the Ivy Bridge High 7s We also have the Haswell i7s and the Ivy Bridge Xeons, and we have the Skylake i5s. And finally, we have the Enthusiast line, S rank. These can pretty much handle anything you throw at it. It's the best of the best. They're used for anything that you need. And also you can have major bragging rights with these installed in your computer. Again, we have nothing from AMD, but from Intel we have Skylake i7s, the i7-5000 series, i7 Extremes, excluding the ones that I noted before, and we have Haswell Xeon 6-core variants and above. 
Thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I will try to update this maybe two to three times a year. And I think the first time I'll update this is when Zen comes out because that's a pretty big leap in performance. If you guys agreed with my tier list, let me know. If you didn't agree with it, tell me why. I'm definitely open to what you guys have to say. If you liked it, give it a like. If you loved it, subscribe and share and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Oh yeah, by the way, I got a sponsorship from GPU Shack. And if you guys don't know what that is, they pretty much sell refurbished GPUs, link in the description. Basically, if you use the promo code OZTOXHARDWARE at checkout, you get $5 off your next purchase. So go over to GPU Shack and buy all them GPUs.